Welcome to the Geek Home World. I am your host, Ed, aka Savage Tech Man. We talk sci fi, TV, movies, superheroes, and all from a geek perspective. You can find us on Blogger, Google, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. We're everywhere. Join the Geek Home World. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting episode, and I promise a short one, here on uh, Geek Home World. I'm your host, Ed Susevich, a.k.a. Savage Techman, and joining me again here on the podcast is Scott Schreiber. Welcome back. Hey, hey thank you, sir. Happy to be here. I twisted your arm, and and we got some takeout, and we said, um, let's talk about Alita. Alita? Bat- battles. Angel. Angel. Almost a <laughs> soldier. Alita Battle Angel. Face of an angel. What was it? Body for built for battle. I'm sorry that you're being sexist right now. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. No. Or, um, or the screenwriters were, or the manga writers were. Yeah. <laughs> so first off, this is going to be full of spoilers. So if you haven't seen Alita yet, what's wrong with you? Go see it. But um, we're going to spoil some things. So... Come back once you've watched it and see if you agree. You can hit us up on Twitter at Geek Home World. And, of course, we're on Facebook. Go over there and like that page at Geek Home World on Facebook. And we're at geekhomeworld.libson.com. All right. House cleaning's done. <laughs> First uh, impressions. First off, you saw it in the, you saw it in the IMAX. Yes. Uh, I saw it in the IMAX 3D. 3D. And that is the way to see it. I, I went to see it on another premium screen with you, um, but it was not in 3D. I, I was curious to see the difference, and there in was. Big, it was in Big D. Right, so. the Big D AMC. So basically another premium big screen. But wow, the difference was night and day. Honestly, between the three D, the IMAX three D, and and this uh, this format, uh, if you see it, go see it in IMAX three D. It, it's uh, Which, it's worth the uh, worth the extra price of admission. It's there. about to go out of the IMAX, at least in our city, probably yeah. tomorrow. I mean, possibly it'll share with How to Train Your Dragon, but uh, you know, hopefully you didn't yeah. miss the boat here on three D. Well. Uh, I want to thank you for going along with me tonight. At least I got to see it in Big D because I know it's switching over there at our local AMC. And um, I noticed the screen rattling. The the bass was so... And (laughs) it made me kind of wish I had went to the IMAX 3D version of it. But uh, let's uh, give our um, overall impressions first. Did you like it? Yes. For the visual effects part of it, it was fantastic. Um, I think, you know, the... The shortcomings are maybe are a little bit because it's geared towards a different demographic than me. Definitely geared towards a younger, younger age group. It's yeah. it's more of a young adult kind of story. There's a young teen love story, so you know it kind of misses the mark for me in that regard. The story kind of suffers there because right. I'm not really invested in the teen love story. But you know, other than that, the visual effects are stellar. Like, absolutely stellar, wouldn't you say? I mean, they... I, I would totally agree on that. I, I have to say that, um, and I, I, I think we owe that a lot of that to James Cameron. Right, he's and, a screenwriter on this, and yes. I would imagine that Robert Rodriguez was uh, able to use Cameron's state-of-the-art, uh, state-of-the-art 3D cameras. So, and And it felt that way, because seeing the difference, again, like seeing it in 2D, I could tell... Uh, that okay, this isn't this isn't the way it was supposed to be seen. Supposed to be seen, yeah, right? It was definitely meant to be seen. Did in you 3D. think? And I wanted to ask you this, and I'm glad I saved it for the podcast here. Sure. But did you think the underwater scene where she was going into the ship? Did you think that maybe foreshadowing that that was Cameron playing around with CGI underwater because <laughs> of the Avatar sequels? Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I thought about I, that. I, yeah, sure. You I know, and I'm at, how did that look in 3D? Did, did the water versus the hair? Because I was looking at things like the hair movement to yeah. see if it looked natural. No, everything, every single shot had had depth. You know, you yeah. there's a lot of um, 3D movies you you go see where there's the conversion. Mm-hmm. And so you're really not getting that depth um, throughout, right. or it's maybe one or two scenes that you really feel that depth of field. Mm-hmm. But on 
in the, on Alita, it's every single scene. It really did remind me. It's not as not as incredible as Avatar. Avatar was maybe yeah. because Avatar was the first of its kind in that regard. Yeah, but it's still kind of comparable in that each scene has those layers. And uh, but you know, and that it's just kind of sad that it, a lot of these theaters aren't showing this in 3D because it is the do, way it's. They're not to be doing seen. it sur- uh, proper service. Right. Yeah. Um, one thing that I couldn't help but notice parallels were because um, this takes place after a big war where they call it the fall, and you have the city, and I was thinking. Help me out, Marsha. I still haven't said Mahershala that. Ali. Mahershala, Mahershala Ali. Mm-hmm. I kind of thought, in a biblical sense, that there was an undertone of like the fallen angel, maybe Lucifer, and maybe okay. he was kind of Lucifer. And then, you know, and the, the idea of technology and AI and trying to improve basically become our own gods and build our own bodies cybernetically and such, you right. know, I think they were playing around with some of those themes with throughout that. Yeah. Know? And I definitely, uh, you know, I definitely see that, uh, with his character. He even said, Ali's character even says that where he'd yeah. rather be the top dog down here than, yeah. R- you know, rule, rule down here than, than, Yeah. Which is basically saying, yeah, I want to be Lucifer. On Earth. I mean, I want to be, you know, instead of going to heaven. Um, So, yeah, they're definitely... A rule in hell or something like that. Yeah, there are definitely some religious undertones there. And, you know, I... It makes me kind of want to go read the the manga. This is based yeah, on it, a manga, right? Yeah, it is. It is, and, is and I've that? not I've not <laughs> seen it uh, or read that, but um, I'm curious to read it now to see where it goes. Mm-hmm. I hated the ending, like a lot of people are saying. I know why they said that because mm-hmm. how it ends, you know, it's basically the big boss battle in the video game, right? And then it, it does a Lord of the Rings thing and, and goes to black. <laughs> no, and I agree with you. In you my know. first viewing, I felt the same way. I'm like, uh, that's where you're gonna end it. Did, Really? Like, they did wrap most things up, you know, because on second viewing, I was like, okay, I know, and maybe because I knew it was coming, but it it felt more complete the second time, if that makes sense. It did feel right. like, okay, this is a, this actually is a good place to lead off because now you have the sequel or the second one. It's definitely setting up you know, for a sequel. This, so. That starts off with a bang. Right. And, and they bring in, and here's your one, you know, first big spoiler here is they bring in Ed Norton at the end of the film there. He's uncredited, right. I, you know, and kind of a surprise appearance uh, for the Oscar. There's a little Luke actor. Skywalker <laughs> appearance there, like at the end of what Force Awakens. <laughs> yeah. So he, yeah. So he shows up there at the end and he's the big bad. He's Nova. And, uh, right. and so they set that, that up for the for the sequel which usually i don't like that when a first movie goes ahead and just sets up the second one right it's like we're just, already going to do another one right right which and is then, very presumptuous <laughs> and if it doesn't do good box office yeah. then you end up with if for eternity this movie that right. just it feels like it needs a sequel it was set up for a sequel and no sequel ever gets made but then again this was kind of a safe bet, even if it didn't doesn't do that great. And I think you said what it made twenty seven. I want million, to say it did like twenty seven or something million, which isn't great. Which isn't great. It was one of the worst February openings, one of the lowest. But uh, it was competing with other stuff that's out there. I mean, a lot of people attendance is still down in the theaters, yeah. and uh, people are staying home. They're trying to save their money versus going to some of these like IMAX screenings. So maybe that's why it didn't stay in IMAX long enough. Yeah. You know, we, we talked a little bit about that being, um, we're what a plus member. Is it a plus or whatever the AMC <laughs> a list, yeah. a list. Yeah. Um, members. And, uh, so that it kind of allowed us to see it, you know, and, uh, my, well, minus the 3d cause we don't have a, I, an AMC 3D in our city, unfortunately. Well, I mean, they do have 3D screenings, but for some reason they weren't. There were no 3D there screenings available. So. And uh, that that perplexes me. I mean, I, I can't think of another movie that needed 3D, at the very least, more than that did. And Yeah, well, you know, Cameron, when, Cameron's 3D. When they're using the 3D cameras, the IMAX, you, yeah. you need to go see it in 3D because that's the intent, you know? Right. And it's like, say, like, a movie that's coming out this year that was filmed in Savannah, Gemini Man, I think is going to be a similar thing 
where when it's released, it will need to be seen in 3D. And if you don't see it in 3D, you're not going to get the full effect. You're not going to so. get what Ang Lee was going for. Right. His true vision. And so. His beautiful cinematography. Uh, he just has a great visual eye. And yeah, yeah, I'm afraid of that for Gemini, man, when it comes out in October of this year. Yeah. Um, and I want it to be a hit for, for Will Smith. I want it to be a hit, not just because it was filmed here, but, yeah. but it sounds interesting. It's an interesting, it almost sounds like Looper. Yeah, I mean, and to be honest, I think the, Which was a good the screenplay's not that not that original, but the techniques behind the 3D right. and the camera. And you've and, and you've or, no, it's fine. You have a bit of an inside on that you from yeah. what you've seen. Yeah. That not a lot of people have seen. So yeah. you know. Um and no, he won't tell me the secrets. <laughs> well, no, no, not until I can't it, pry it, it from his dead corpse. <laughs> not, not until the movie comes not out. Until it so. comes out. Then. But yeah, I mean, but it, the the strength of that will is in the is in the technology. So it, it's one of those that needs to be seen in 3D like this. Mm -hmm. And you know, and maybe I don't. I can't really think of another one coming out this year that 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 begs to be watched in 3D. I'm but, gonna say Episode Nine. That's just because Star Wars is sure. meant to be, yeah. you know, on a I big think, screen. Yeah, I think. I think those it, those those can be enjoyed without it, though. I guess is I don't know. I think, but well, <laughs> no, you, you can't enjoy it. <laughs> I, I will also, and I know I I can't enjoy it, but I, or I can in two D. But when Terminator comes out this year, you know, okay, I'm so excited, and that's Cameron, right? And I, his it's going to be a direct sequel to Terminator Two. He's going to throw everything to the side and. Right. Uh, and it's a lot of the original cast and right. to an extent and um i'm excited and i really want it to do well i just i really want him to redeem even if this is the last movie terminator movie ever i want it to redeem james cameron for the cuz he loved terminator right. and it was so ahead of its time even though it hasn't aged so well but anyway we're not talking about terminator um <laughs> but that i was thinking about cameron and you know sure. i don't really care for any more sequels I, I, for um avatar i'm not a big avatar fan but i still go back to that movie and say that's the best 3d i've seen right. in my life yeah. no. everything else the 3d fad that we went through yeah. it just nobody could touch there's a few have come close but nobody can touch it right. what cameron has done and um i think you know alita was a good test run for some of his mm -hmm. technology so i'm excited to see yeah. underwater avatarish yeah. universe or whatever he's going to go with it yeah and i know there's a lot of year left here we've still got 10 months yeah. to go but i'd I I'd honestly be surprised if this isn't included in the best visual effects category. I mean, it's I, there's I some see that. Yeah, incredible right. stuff. Did she not? Like, yes, there's those subtle differences to where you can tell that Alita is a cyborg, but it still like works seamlessly still, in the world. Like you're does. in a world with humans and a world with and cyborgs. Let's not forget the choreography of the battles. I mean, one of the first like battle scenes she has in that alleyway with the two, the hench woman and hench man or whatever. Yeah. And um, I, I almost turned to you in the theater, but I didn't want to disturb the, the mood of things going on screen there. But um, that was a pretty impressive battle for me. And then, you yeah. know, when we get into the later stuff, it was even better. And, yeah, I felt that the film, I, I felt it, I, I bought into this world, yeah. what they were selling. I realized the little teen romance thing going on there kind of thing. And that didn't bother me. I mean, that was it was fine. It all seemed to flow well. One thing I thought of another thing is when the guy gets the reconstituted body or whatever, the cyborg body, the boyfriend, and it almost seemed kind of you knew that was coming. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 then when he's climbing up that piping or whatever to the big city where he's always literally trying to climb that hill, he's almost like Icarus yeah. who mm -hmm. flew too close to the sun. Yeah. And then he has that fall, which mm -hmm. everybody seems to have that fall. So yeah. you know, when we come back to the overtones, maybe the religious overtones or undertones or whatever the tones are that are parallels. I don't know. But it was a good film. I, I enjoyed it. I yeah, and I don't know how familiar you are with Robert Rodriguez's older work, um, um, but there I've were seen definitely some there were definitely some little. I thought there were some little nuggets to his old work, like. Uh, but doesn't like he bring a lot of action though? Yes. So if yeah. you're not familiar with Robert Rodriguez, yeah. uh, listeners out there, he uh, 
he got his start uh, with El Mariachi is is was his breakout that uh, he did, and then it turned into Desperado. Desperado so, is still like one of my favorites. I, oh God, I love that movie. Yeah, and I actually uh, it was on the other night, and I I was like, you know what, I'm watching this. I haven't seen it in a while, right. and, and so like the bar scene, the first bar scene that she right. you know she takes everybody out. Um, that reminds me of the bar scene in Desperado where he's fighting 20, you know, bandoleros yeah, or whatever. Bandoleros. And, he, yeah. and he, you know, comes out unscathed. And there's even the little, the guitar player on the street. Ding, 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 ding. You know? Oh my gosh, you're so right. I, I didn't... There's a I, yeah the guy with three hands yeah, three mechanical yeah. hands playing guitar so I think it, he was having a little fun there like you know paying respect to his roots yeah. and uh, that that's very clever that you picked that out because I, I missed that I mean I did I did remember the guy but I did I didn't put those two together yeah. and he you know in his old films so you've got Desperado that whole trilogy one, yeah. um, El you know El Mariachi Desperado Once Upon a Time in Mexico right and then uh, from Dust Till Dawn so he's like yeah. he's got this root in gory films so now if you think about the violence in alita if they were actually it was graphic violence if they were humans right right like there's there's a couple of things that are really graphic but because because they're they're cyborgs cyborgs, yeah there's no blood if if a (laughs) you know part of her arm goes through the guy's eye and it's actually the 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 human flesh part of his eye but yeah you know, or the guy gets uh pulled into the to the gears like and his head yeah, gets and crushed was like, and, there was one point I'd, or the woman in the alley where her head uh, it comes off of her body yeah now <laughs> I, I i looked away because it's like i really don't want to see that uh, that head splash and i don't know if it did i, I looked away for a half a second there was just, a little bit of green blood yeah i was, I was afraid of that and uh i liked but, like the design of of and I haven't read the source material on this, but I liked the um, the costuming and you know that they did and all the mechanical yeah apparatuses and were done everything was done well. It just felt like a high a quality look. film. They, there was definitely you know um, a plus design yes. for sure, and I think uh, Rodriguez did a great job of marrying his old self with his newer filmmaker self because once he had kids he went on and did the spy kids movies oh dear so he shark ki- boy he kind of he kind of took a drastic Love turn a no he did those are his movies uh, well and those are his kids i think too actually the actors well um but so he kind of marries that graphic violence you know of his old filmmaking with the teeny bopper action of spy kids and right. and so we're kind of seeing that mix of it and i was surprised and maybe it was just the it's what thursday and we went to like a four was it a four o'clock show mm-hmm. and there might have been counting us 10 people in the theater well, which yeah, didn't bode but, well, but it might have been the time of the day, sure. you know, because later working. on t- tonight now, and when we're recording this, Wait. it's like, uh, what's the new movie again? How to, How train, to train Your Dragon. The final Three. How to Train yeah. Your Dragon is out there. So it's in the IMAX and, and all that. So um, I don't know if this movie has legs. I think I hadn't looked at any box office on it, but I imagine it would do really well in China. It seems like. You know, well, it had a diverse cast. Japan, Japan because it's yeah. that's the where it came from. Well, so. exactly. Yeah. yeah, I believe in that manga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, like Japanese anime and stuff yeah. like that. And um, but yeah, this should do well overseas. So yeah. um, you know, I definitely see this franchise taking <sighs> off, and I'm. I like where it's going. I think it it'll be a fun franchise. I and, can, uh, can know, just, I can see that that. You know, also the feminism more well, sure. prevalent in there, you know. Well, and a lead is, is an right. Hispanic American, too. Right. So, you know, we it's like we checked every diversity box, I think we could. And and it didn't bother me. It, it wasn't like beat me over the head with it, no. you know, even though apparently the bad guy's a, a white dude, you know. that. <laughs> But you know, yeah, white dude with white hair, white suit, blue eyes, yeah. like ultra blue eyes, you know. So, um, you know, yeah. but I, I get some of the undertones of that, but that's it's Although fine. Although, technically, the politics doesn't... Mah- Mahershala is the villain in this one, well, that's technically, because he's the body, <laughs> yeah, he's the body he's the, uh, yeah. that, that that he incorp- you know, incorporates, right? But. So, yeah, but but you know, some movies beat you over the head with you know, all of these politically correct stuff and diversity, and that's fine. I, I want diversity, it's not that I don't, 
uh, this movie didn't didn't really beat me over the head with it. You know, I care about the story. You know, and and to me. I don't care who's playing the character as long as it works with the story. Yeah, and movies like this can suffer from bad acting, too. And True. I, and I didn't see that much here. The kid wasn't that great, and maybe here and there, the lead, you know, yeah. it didn't come across great. There's some dialogue that's pretty unnecessary, like we get it. <laughs> but yeah. the Little acting, especially exposition. from the adults, I mean, you got you got Oscar winners and you know in there, and nominees, you've got... Christoph Waltz and yeah. Maher Shah Ali's about to win his second Oscar. Jennifer Connelly right. has an Oscar. She won for Beautiful Mind, right? I um, think she did. And uh, who else is in there? They got um, ja- Jackie Earl Haley plays the big bad guy. That was <laughs> I. You know, I, I, I can never place his face. You know, it's it like didn't look like him. It, it, t- it totally didn't. I look totally like him. thought it was uh, Sam Worthington from Avatar. I totally yeah. thought it was him. And then in the credits, it says Jackie Earl Haley. I'm like, what? Because <laughs> Sam Worthington was also in uh, Terminator, one of the Terminator oh, films, <laughs> then, the one with Christian Bale. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Terminator already, Salvation. Gen- no, what is it? Salvation. 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 Yeah. Okay, but yeah, uh, but I thought the acting was great. Like Ali, because he gets you know possessed by Nova, right? He has to switch back and forth and make that believable. And he did it seamlessly. Yeah. He he did. He's he's such yeah. a, a gifted actor, and yeah. and and um. Yeah, um, so we talked about the technical. It definitely is best experienced. Um, the bigger, the bigger, better theater that you have, <laughs> yeah, and you'll if, really appreciate it if more. If your theater, I mean, it doesn't have to be IMAX, but if your theater is still showing it in 3D, spend that extra $3 it or whatever is it is it because it. it's the way, yeah. And the, the, the 2D, there were some parts like when she threw her arm out or, or one of those chains arms right. went out i was like oh well i know that that shot is specifically done to you know knock you in the face in 3d yeah. you know but even i will say like even the shots like in the rain you know where there's the cityscape where, oh, yeah. where it comes down with the rain right like that in 3d was stellar too so now, i, mean, I it's could not just the action stuff being on sets and everything and, and kind of you know seeing behind the curtain how things are made when they're walking early in the story and there's that backdrop and you see the people like at the, I almost call it like a newspaper stand and they're kind of just walking. Yeah, yeah. It, that looked kind of green. Sc- I can imagine that that's kind of green screen. It still worked. It still worked, mm-hmm. but it, it felt a little green screeny. You know, there's like no. one little moment, but all in all, it was, it was seamless. Like you said. Yeah. I mean, and think about all the cyborgs. Um, a lot of these cyborg or cyborgs only have a face. True, and then so you're seeing all the ro- you know the ro- robotics and seeing through these people quite literally. You know, you're <laughs> like yeah, exactly. You're seeing through their neck because the their part- spaces. So it's kind of so that yeah. all looked really great. Like I, I think that yeah, they're, they're definitely in store for a visual effects nomination here. Definitely, definitely um, on that. I, I think they should get that. Um, like she literally pulls her heart out of her chest. Yeah. I was like, can you put that back? That's weird. That was a funny kind of moment there, <laughs> yeah. but she literally get, was going to give her heart to, yeah. to her boyfriend. Or, right. No, she's not my girlfriend. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so um, what was the message of this film for you? Oh man. I, I, I guess it's just to keep persevering. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, and I, and I hate to say that, but maybe that's where this movie lacks a little bit. There's really not so much a message. I mean, it, it didn't really jump out at me, I guess, you know. And I, but it, but there is that message of, uh, you know, there, there's importance of finding who you are, obviously, because she doesn't, True. she does not know her. And owning your own power, I guess, you know, realizing that. Right, and, and you know, she also she's a just, battle angel. Yeah. At first. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's, it's that profound of a movie. Yeah, yeah, it's not, I don't think it's as deep as I'm making it out to be. You know, so. Sometimes I can look and find things that are, you know, <laughs> universal type of themes in there. I mean, but, there are. There's yeah. kind of those themes we've seen before, and, it, you know, there was more, there was more to it. Uh, it seemed more about this love story, you know, and then... Then maybe we we'd want it to be, but uh, cool. Well, any final thoughts? Uh, I mean, again, I just reiterate, reiterate. it's it's a three D movie. 
This is a 3D three, movie. So if you see it in 2D and you're disappointed, then and you could have seen it in 3D, that's then right. that's on you, bro. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, nothing we can do for you. But yeah, I mean, but, it's uh, it's again, it's a fun movie. Yeah. Don't don't expect to come out. Uh, you know, with a, with a method, with a with message. message. <laughs> yeah, you know, it it's good popcorn fun. Yeah, I had no popcorn during the film, by the way, but um, <laughs> I imagine if I did, it would be a good popcorn flick, <laughs> as it were. Absolutely. So, um, just a preview of uh, a couple things. By the time this uh, comes out, um, or somewhere around there, uh, you've written up your Oscar blogs. You've turned them over to me. So, on our preview for Sunday's Oscars coming up. Um, and um, we're recording this on the Thursday before the Oscars. This yeah, particular episode, I was happy so. to do that. Check those out for so. some predictions. If you've got an Oscar pool that you want to win some money in, then... Uh, Did you want to say that the headline, because we have... I'm just going to leave it probably in, in the actual blog, but the headline that came out while we were coming out of the theater... Oh, the latest news was just that Kendrick Lamar and SZA will not be performing, but they could be just saying that to throw us off. But, and then they show up and surprise yeah, us. So, I mean, in my blog, it says that they will will not be performing as of now, but to expect it as a surprise. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe I'll still be right. <laughs> well, we did two very extensive, and I, I, I give a lot of the praise to Scott for his extensive research on it. Uh, but we did two separate episodes uh, about the Oscars. So if you haven't checked those out um, on Geek Home World, you should check those out. Um and uh, and look for the blogs. They're going to be out soon. They'll probably be on our geekhomeworld.blogspot.com. I'm going to try to get them loaded up to maybe the Geek Home World Facebook page if I if I can get maybe even a PDF up there or something. I'll see how that works. I hadn't tried that before. So fantastic. Um, yeah. Uh, looking forward. At some time soon, we want to do our 2019 preview. You know, we're just going to rattle off some films that we want to see that we're looking forward to, and there's a lot of them out there. Um, and so that's coming soon. So, so we've got a lot of great things coming on the podcast. And, and once again, I want to thank you, Scott, for taking time out of your, your evening to come and podcast with me. It's always fun to have yeah, you on the show. Absolutely. My pleasure. All righty. Well, um, you know where we're, we're at, uh, geekhomeworld.libson.com. Uh, please go to the Geek Home World Facebook page. Hit that like and follow button, and uh, you can interact with us there. You can also... These episodes are showing up also on YouTube. You can check them out there. They're actually showing up on blogspot.com too, Geek Home World Blogspot. We're actually getting some traction over there, even though they're audio podcasts. But um, I hope to have some time this coming year to, to do more blogging about film and when I can put my thoughts together. But for me, it's easier just to speak them. Um, but, you know, I'm going to work on that. That might be one of the things I work on some more. But uh, got a lot coming this year. We're really excited here on the podcast. And, uh, coming up in this September would be five years for the podcast. So if we, um, I'm in my 10th year podcast, I'm rattling on. So that means wrap it up, Ed. <laughs> yeah. I always need, always need a director. Wrap yeah, it up. Wrap I think it that up. light's blinking, buddy. Yeah. That light's already blinking. We hadn't even hit 30 minutes. Can you believe that? <laughs> I cannot, but I Hey, cannot. we, uh, so I thought we covered it pretty well. We covered it pretty well. All righty. So thank y'all for listening and we'll see you again. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Geek Homeworld with your host, Savage Tech Man. You can find us on Libsyn, Google+, follow and interact with us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, listen to us on iTunes and leave a review, subscribe to us on YouTube, read our thoughts on Blogger. See you again on the Geek Homeworld.